Hello, I think we are live now. Good, um, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone. Guys, meet Kilo, the uh, the luxury wedding king of Adelaide. Um, if I I can be a wedding photographer for my next life, that's uh, Kilo. I want to be. He's uh, he's the crazy rich Asian who uh, swap out all the luxury weddings in Adelaide, and uh, I love his I love his work. You know. So clean, beautiful, and glamorous touch in it. Thank you. And, um, Thank and you. he he's always doing this Asian humble fight with me, so which makes me <laughs> laughing even more. Even though that he his house is so big, you know, um, you know, his backyard is literally the size of my house. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone knows that. I love his work. Anyway, um, uh, all right, guys. Uh, run, uh, you know, we have a limited time. So uh, before we jump into the presentation, we're going to break the presentation into two parts. Uh, first, mm -hmm. uh, Kilo is going to spend about 15 minutes to walk through his presentation. So you have the Jewish bit or all the, um, all the, all the new way of doing the lighting of his, his experience with 8100 Pro. Uh, we're going to condense those in the first 15 minutes. And we will answer all your questions. So please leave all your questions Below, um, after the first 15 minutes, that's going to be Q&A session. Leave all your questions below. We will answer them one by one. We will answer all of those questions uh, at the end of his uh, talk, which is 15 minutes beyond. So, uh, mm -hmm. um, so feel free to leave all your questions. And now I will um, get, leave it to Kilo for his yeah. beautiful recent work. With anyone Thank, you. Thank you, Aries. I appreciate that. Hello, everybody. My name is um, Ki Lu. I'm a wedding photographer based in Australia in a city called Adelaide. Um, today, I want to um, share with you guys how to make your images stand out in the wedding photography world. As everybody will understand, the wedding photography industry is very competitive, uh, especially with a lot of new cameras these days that are easier to use, they are cheaper, and you don't really need to, to know too much about photography to how to operate a camera. So, you know, the point of entry into wedding photography is getting easier and easier. Um, you know, with a mirrorless camera, for example, you, you get to see what you, what you shoot. So which makes it so easy for people, even with basic knowledge of photography, to um, think they can start shooting wedding. But how can we, as professional wedding photographer, make our work stand out from the rest? And this is the basis of my presentation today. Um, to be honest with you, you know, everybody can shoot a nice photo these days, but how to make your photos stand out even more is, you know, is, the, is your understanding of lighting. Not everybody who buy a camera, walk into shop, buy a camera, will understand lighting, understand how to use lighting. Uh, and lighting, to me, I think is, a, for me, I'm still learning about lighting even till today. And um, if we if we talk back a few, just just you know, just even just um, a couple couple of years back, um, using lighting is is in my opinion was actually quite difficult uh, because you know if you were to um, use a flash like this and you want to remote trigger this flash, you have to put a you know put a, a receiver at the bottom and then you have a transmitter on your camera, and to do that you you need to you know to make them talk to each other. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard because you can't change settings on them on your on, on your receiver like what Godox have these days where you can actually you know change the aperture change the zoom not change the aperture change the power change the zoom without shouting to your assistant going oh you know you should do this do that that kind of stuff so now with new technology you know getting understanding how to use light uh, artificial light as well as you know, artificial light is making life of wedding photographers such as myself a lot easier. And if you guys are natural light shooter, you know, I really do recommend you to start thinking about, you know, getting into more, you know, flash photography because not every time you're on a wedding shoot, the light will be perfect. Um, and you, as a wedding photographer, you need to be able to shoot in any kind of lighting condition. And it's this type of light that will this type of gear that will help, you know, help you make you make your work stand apart, you know, uh, and give you a variety of your work. You know, you you can still shoot um, shoot a lot of um, natural light as well, but 
it's this uh, kind of um, um, equipment that will really help you, especially now with the new latest version coming out. We've got you know that AD100 Pro, which is amazing because you know it's it's actually smaller smaller than a V1, and you know it's so handy to to take anywhere. For example, with this with this um with this photo here that I have here in this cover page, this was only lit up with just one AD100 Pro, and you can bounce simply bounce the light of this onto the ceiling, and then you get you know amazing even light across every single bridal party. Um, and, and it's really simple to use with that kind of regard. Um, with my next slide, I want to show you guys a situation where, you know, we were shooting outside, outside, and, you know, it's really dark. Um, and if you try to shoot this with available light, it's going to be really difficult to do. And what I've done with this shot is I used the AD100 Pro. All I did was put a blue gel on top of it, like this. And then all I did was flat, back with the couple. And the result, can be very different, you know. I don't, you know, with this new gel, with this new um, AD100 Pro, it's so easy where I don't even need to use a grid anymore because it comes with a zoom function on there. And, you know, one less piece of gear that I need to bring with me is, is awesome because all I need to do is zoom it to 85 mil to control the spread of the light and then bang, I'll get, you know, I'll get a beautiful image like this. Another example, you know, we can look at this photo here. Um, I was at a, a barn, so this is a very nice, relaxed wedding. The barn is beautiful. You know, a normal, a normal person, a normal photographer would probably, you know, ask the couple like the way I am to ask the couple to kiss in front of this barn door. But to bring it to the next level, you know, I added, I added the AD100 Pro at the back of the barn door. Um, if I show you to this slide here, you can see that I got the AD100 Pro on a tripod, and and that's it, very simple. No, no modifier, no nothing, and just shoot that through the barn door. Now, how do I create the, the smoky effect in these photos? I always have this little can with me. I bought this from, um, I think, colorsmoke.com, and it's very handy. Um, you know, I can add different effect to it, and when you add different, um, you know, smoke and effect into a dark area and lead it up with flash, you'll get something magical, something very different like this. And that's another way of standing out with, um, you know, making your wedding photos stand out as well. And to do this, you know, my AD100 Pro, I was shooting at half power. So that's one example. Another example you can do is, you know, a beautiful reception like this. Now, a beautiful reception like this will make your photo amazing already. But um, at the same time, it will make, it'll make it kind of hard, hard to, um, to make the couple stand out because the decoration and the fit out is so amazing. And this is why, you know, I, I always like to use, um, use some light in the background of the couple, the back lit the couple, and just put the, in this case, I just put the AD100 Pro at the back. And then again, a, the high zoom, zoom 85 mil, and then, and then get this shot. So the reason why I do this is so that the couple will stand out apart from all the different, um, you know, the amazing couple and, and hero the couple a bit more. Uh, rather than them getting lost if we were not to use any artificial lighting in a situation like this. Moving along, um, here's another example. You know, on a wedding day, very typical, you get, you know, we get a photo of the, the groom, you know, um, um, a photo, a portrait of the groom, and to make it more, you know, in, in my opinion, to make this more special, more different, is, you know, I put the AD100 Pro behind a, 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 a window a window is shield and to create something that's a bit, you know, different rather than just a stock standard point and shoot shot. And that's one way you can do that. Again, this 100 Pro with Zoom 28 to create this type of um, image that's a stand out from the rest. Dancing. Um, dancing is my favorite time of using, um, using different flash technique and photography. Um, you know, in different scenario like this, all I simply did was hold Hold that AD100 Pro on my on one hand, and then with my Sony on the other hand, shooting different um, situation as I go. Now, a lot of people might go, "Oh, why don't you use our hot shoes like a V1 and put it on top?" I can do that as well. But now that I have the AD100 Pro, I find this is even better and faster because the recycle time is actually faster on the AD100 Pro, and because it has a built-in fan now. And the good thing about this is I can 
leave this anywhere on the dance floor uh, quite easily because of the size. So, you know, if I want some shot where it's backlit, I can quickly, you know, run over to, to um, a nearby table or somewhere, just chuck the 8100 Pro there uh, to create some different lighting effect um, as an example of this here. Um, another example is something like this, you know, when you, I always, I love using the flash to shoot through different objects because I feel like it creates another dimension and it really makes the pictures really and the, and the subject really stand out. In this case, all I did was put the 8100 Pro behind the gold, gold curtain and bang, as simple as that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get a photo like this. And, you know, I'm not always perfect. When I, when, I, when, I, when I photograph a photo, when I set my lighting, you know, sometimes the setting might not be right. And this is why with modern technology is so much easier because I can adjust all my setting using the, the trigger, using the X1 Pro trigger and adjust it that way. But sometimes I might even get stuck um, with a setting and nothing might not work out. And, you know, that's why uh, and in situation like that, I would even switch to TTL. And sometimes that's a lifesaver for me when, I, when I'm not sure what the setup and the settings will be. Um, but yeah, with technology, you know, there's really no reason that you should be scared of starting to use stuff like flashes and stuff and not just rely on natural light. This is another example where, you know, in the morning we, um, we sometimes we, we would go to the, rather than go to the, the groom's house straight away, we would go to the preparation where the groom and the groomsmen will get their face, you know, get their face, facial hair done, um, you know, have a haircut. And again, in situations like that, you know, those photos can be quite flat and boring if you don't, you know, flat and boring. And hence why I start playing around with a bit of lighting effect. Those little droplet at the back is actually, um, you know, water droplet where they spray, spray to wet their hair. So I just caught that moment where they were, you know, trying to wet wet a bit of their hair and that kind of stuff and then have the 8100 Pro at the back, just um, lighting that up. Um, again, you know, I use a zoom function because I didn't bring my grid that day uh, and that came really handy in my opinion. Moving along. So this is another classic example of, you know, we'll, we'll get there once the groom is all, all, all dressed up and everything, you know, we'll get some really nice photo or even when he's adjusting his tie and that kind of stuff, we'll try to make something, you know, a bit different rather than uh, a bit moodier um, because and bring in a bit of light and shadow. And to do this, um, I use the 8100 Pro. This time what I've did in this is I used the barn door because I wanted to really control my light to, to hit certain spot. In this case, I, want, I don't want the light to go too much towards the front of the room. I wanted to concentrate mainly just a bit on the subject and not too much in the background as well. And this is why behind door is so useful because you can control where your light go and hit. Um, all of a sudden, you know, with this, you can, you can control light, which is amazing. You can control the way your photo look and how you want the mood you want to create. Um, in the next slide, here's a, here's a little video where it's be, a bit of a behind the scene of what we've done here. <laughs> so yeah, that was actually uh, Brady. Um, Brady is an amazing videographer, so he was doing a video that day. So it was amazing that he was um, there uh, and he was willing to help me hold a light. Um, so normally even with the 8100 Pro, I don't really need an assistant because it's so simple and so light to use. This is another example. A lot of a lot of um, a lot of people on Instagram, on Facebook, or even YouTube, that always ask me, "Oh, Key, how do you always get your pictures so nice and clean and bright?" Um, again, my trick is very simple. My trick is just to use a lot of light. Um, and in situation like this, you know, where everything is really white already, but if you want it to be even more cleaner, whiter, and the white balance to be, you know, perfect and nice. All I did was, you know, put a, sorry, go back, put a flash like an 8100 Pro. But when I'm shooting it, all I, all I did was um, point it towards the ceiling and then let the ceiling be my big reflector and, and you know, 
let the reflect let the ceiling you know bounce the light off and you know eliminate any harsh shadow around the room and by doing that i would also speed up my editing because um editing something that's really nice and clean and bright is so much easier to edit um when i do it this way so that's all i've done um the trick is though um the power depends on the situation but normally around one over four of the power will do it uh, but the zoom always have to be at the lower zoom. So in this case, 28 mil, uh, because when the more the lower your zoom is, the, the the bigger the spread of the light is, and then you'll get a more softer light bouncing back off the ceiling. So that's that one there. Um, moving on to my last photo, in um, some time to make make a stand out. You know, um, you can play around with not just flash, but you can also play around with you know continuous light. To make your photos stand out, and in this case, um, the eighty one hundred is is convenient in this situation because you can also have a continuous light source like this. So in this photo, it's very simple. I asked the couple to, you know, hold a hold the light and face it and face it towards their face. Um, and this photo is really, really done in 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 a, in a couple of minutes, and we got the shot. So that's another way that you can make your photos stand out, um, not just using flash, but also using continuous lighting. Um, I hope that helps, guys. So that brings me to my last slide already. Oh, thank you, Key. That was uh, uh, that was straight to the point. Straight to the yeah. point. So all the that was beautiful image of you thank know you. I love your white and clean images and uh, twenty eight mil sort of zoom was was a great tips. Because ever Thank since AKR one, I find I I I like the last chart I had, I had with Ashley. I was struggling mm. to use the zoom function already oh. because because yeah. with a grid and the doom actually, um, um, yeah. which is more intuitive for me and my assistant. So um, yes, fair this enough. Is a, this is really nice, really nice presentation, and also love the fact that uh, when you back back lead her from the golden from the golden curtain, I was like yeah, yeah. that's. <laughs> That's key, silver, golden, luxury, um, yeah. very, uh, very beautiful images. Um, thank you. Thank you. Speaker of which, let's um, shall we just go back and look at uh, the question? Sure, um, we can do that. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Okay, let's start with um, Tanba, who's asking you, how do you set up your lighting? I own two eighty. Two V ones and one eighty two hundred. Two V one and one eighty two hundred. Um, yep. So with the V one, V one I normally use that for um, for a lot of reception work yep. or morning preparation work. Uh, I use a lot of that. Um, for eighty eighty two hundred Pro, um, when the eighty one hundred Pro wasn't out yet, I used the eighty two hundred Pro for a lot of location work. Um, because the light is a lot more powerful. But for me now, I actually use the 100 Pro a lot more because of the size. Even though the power is half the power, um, I still find it really, really, I, I find actually find it enough. And in, in the odd situation where the power is not um, strong enough, I would um, I would just, I would have a V1 next on my camera anyway, and I'll just combine the two and, and get that look. Um, so yeah, that's how I would use it. Yeah. So I find uh, with uh, because I use roundhead all the time, I find it's um the eighty one hundred pro. Um, I know eighty two hundred pro is two hundred watts. I'm not sure it's because it's roundhead, it's more even light, or it's adapted or something. I find it's mm. a similar luminous level compared with eighty two hundred pro. So for me, yeah. I I pretty much just replace uh, my eighty two hundred pro with eighty one hundred pro already. If there's some extra power or I need to use a softbox with it, I will just go with 8300 Pro. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just my personal take. So Mike yeah. Kolaini is asking us, can you show the Godox projector part? The Do you ever use the projector? The Godox projector part? Yeah. No. Um, I think Godox does I'm not sure it's a yeah. I'm not sure if it's a bound door. I think Godox recently did come came out with a projector, which uh, can be uh, adapted uh, with 8300 Pro with uh, with uh, the Bowen mount. 
um, but it's not covered today. It's not covered today. So yeah. Um, why does it never look so good? How do you seek for inspiration? Ask by Mari Mariano. So what was your again? Sorry, Eric. Where do you seek for inspiration? Inspiration. Eh? I yeah. actually, besides love taking photos, I actually love watching movies. So I did get a lot of inspiration from movies, um, especially, you know, recent movies like The Queen, the Queen's Gambit. It, I'm sure a lot of people would have seen that movie on Netflix. But if you yeah, watch that movie... I love that movie. Yeah. I was actually not watching the movie that much. I was actually looking at and inspired by the lighting in that movie. The lighting in that movie is just simply amazing. And and that's where I get a lot of my um, inspiration from, on different lighting and uh, different different, you know, photos idea it's a lot, a lot of that's from movies actually yeah so eric is asking what's the website where you get the smoke can the smoke can is from colorsmoke.com .au. .au. yeah so i think it's only for i think it's only for aussies um mm. but i'm pretty sure if you're in other Very countries you can yeah uh, you, you should find something similar yeah yeah I always have this in my bag, just as you know, a touch of, yeah, yeah. atmosphere, make make the photo book a bit more moody. Yeah. Mm. So MV Pictures asking how to use Godox MS three hundred three kit studio light with different light flashes while using XT sixteen receiver. I think MS three hundred. It's just um, three hundred watt studio flash. It's very similar to. Um, to any 300 Pro, but it's, mm. it needs to be connected with um, obviously cables. I think it's a different topic. Um, uh, my uh, f Today we're going to focus on waiting. Uh, if you want to look at three lights or two lights studio light setup, uh, there on the Godox YouTube channel, there is something called a Godox Lighting 101. It actually teaches you guys, uh, teaches you simple quick and easy uh, light setup. So just one light with umbrella, and two lights with uh, soft boxes like clamshell lightings and yeah. stuff like those. So check it out. It will help. It will help you. Um, let's look at next questions. So, Jason said the bright staircase photo is amazing. Yeah, I would. I have to agree. That's um, I love that photo too, and I, I appreciate the tips about using the white zone at twenty eight. Mm. Uh, yeah, that was like, uh, great tips. Great tips. Thank you. Like as a wedding photographer, you know the less gear you bring with you, is the better, because there's so yeah. much stuff happening. So even though the grid is um is handy to have as well, but you know what? Sometimes I'll, I'll forget and leave in the car. And if that's the case, that's why anyone yeah. put handy, you I can lost, zoom in. I've already, I've, I've already lost two sets. So I bought, um, I recently just purchased another three. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I, I was just, it's so tiny. I just keep on losing those. So I just yeah, I I decided to purchase one. Because, yeah. yeah, because the price is so cheap. It's mm. It costs next to nothing. So yeah, I just I purchased a couple of there, just leave those in my car. So I would never, yeah, leave that behind. Uh, so. CSM is asking you which Sony camera is best for wedding. Wedding. Well, personally, I, 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 when I, when I chose my camera, I chose um, the Sony A A seven R three. The reason mm. why A seven R three is because I can crop it, um, so I can use one lens. Like my favorite lens is twenty four seventy, and I can I can literally shoot with the seven R three. I can shoot the whole wedding with a 2470 mm. if I want to, mm. because um, when I pop it, you know, the 70 mil become even much closer uh, with a 30 fix, uh, 35 mil crop. Um, that's why I would choose that one. But you do need to have a powerful computer to run through all those extra large raw files. Mm. Do you want to talk about your recent, yeah, your recent movement or you don't? Either way, I'm happy with it. Doesn't matter. My recent movement, no. not complete yet. So let's not talk about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> So uh, Meet is asking, how to make situation any situation creative? How to make any situation creative? Well, first, yeah. first of all, you need to you need to look at uh, the light first. The light will determine 
where the creative direction you go to. Um, for me, when I when I go to a, a situation, I'll first look at the light, and then I'll concentrate on the on the couple first uh, next, mm-hmm. and then location is actually my 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 third my third thing. So the light would just, for example, if, if there is if there's a light coming in from a a corridor or from somewhere where it's different, then you know I would I would use that light to my advantage, and then I would add my own light to think of a way to make it more more wow. Well. Um, I always use a lot. Pretty much every shot I, I take, I, I use flash in it because I, I feel like if, once you add flash into it, um, a photo just become more more epic, more wow. And and couples are not used to seeing a lot of flash photo because you know when they take their photos on their phone, selfies always without flash. So when I see that you can do something that look different, that's how you can wow the couple as well. I think um, I I was there. I saw how Kilu shoots. So I I think Kilu always has this pre visualization, if that makes sense. So he always in his head, in his brain, he always have a picture which is so different from the natural light pictures, and he and so you have to have a creative mind there. Uh, have a picture in your head first. Then it's all matters. It's about the techniques, right? It's almost like camera settings, your lightings, your light outputs, your light modifiers with a grid or with a bomb door, whatever, or with a color gel. Uh, mm-hmm. Then those come second. So it's it's always about your creative mind first. Then the techniques. The techniques you can learn from him. Uh, the mind, I think you need to um, you need to buy. Watching those movies, the book you read, the music you listen to, there's lots of those which is involved. Yeah, you and, can get you know get inspiration from from, yeah. from the things around you as well. Yeah, I think start uh, don't 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 be too harsh on yourself on yourself. Just try to create a one new image from every single wedding, and mm-hmm. you can start by mimic. You know, if uh, Kilo's style or Ashley's Ashley K's style is something you love, you can start by mimic them because if Mm. Uh, they they share they selflessly share out everything about the the lights they use the color gel you know the accessory they use the kilo is so um it's so to the detail he even share with you what sort of zoom he used so <laughs> try to mimic his you know yeah. shots with similar sort of uh, situations and mm. try to develop your own style creative mind from there meet that's cool so Addis George is asking can we use AD200 photo, AD200 in a photo, and make the light looks like available sunlight. Definitely, definitely. Uh, of course, that would depend on a lot of um, scenarios as well. If if you try to do that in in the middle of the day, where you know where where the sun is really strong already, yes, no, you can't do that. But on an overcast day, yes, no problem, you can and you can do that. And I I do that all the time. That's why I in my bag I always have a an orange gel. I just put that straight onto my AD100 Pro, and then that's I always try to mimic the sun with that to get that because all my couple some sometime a couple a lot of my couple want sunset shot, and not every day you get a nice sunset, and that's when this comes in. Yeah, sure. Johnson Vino is asking you, what's your favorite lens for bridal shot? Bridal shoot? You mean the the couple or the bridal party? Uh, if it's the, I'm if it's sure the, he's saying you're such a good inspiration, Kilo. Uh, uh, Johnson obviously love you. Could you please share us what lens do you prefer, or your what's your favorite lens for bridal shots? I would say it's a bridal Sorry. party or for the bride. I think it sounds like a bridal party, isn't it? Bridal party. It's, it sounds like, a, but I'll cover both anyway. So yeah. I'll, I'll explain to you guys on, on my wedding day. The only there's only pretty much only three lens that I'm used the most is a 2470, and 2470 will get me 80 percent of the shot that you see on my Instagram and Facebook. And then my other favorite lens is 135 mil. The one so Sony G Master 135 is amazing for 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 just the bride and groom for those really nice close up because you know the bokeh you get is just an amazing portrait lens. And my third favorite lens is my wide angle. Uh, my wang angle is more for my dress shot, you know, where you see those really big dress shot that I do. Um, that's where my wide angle come out. My wang angle is it's my least used. 2470 is my most, and then second is 135. I hope that answers your question. And uh, Ali is asking, how many batteries do 
I need for a full day of for full day of photography with AD100 Pro? Mm -hmm. um, maximum two. I never go over two, but 80% of the time, only one battery for the AD100. Yeah. Um, and that's why 8100 Pro is my preferred light now because um, the battery is the same as my V1 and the V1 I always have in my bag anyway for reception yeah. photos. Yeah. I do the same. I just can't be bothered. I, I didn't even bother to carry out the extra battery. So whenever yeah. my 8100 Pro is out, mm. I'll just take out the V1 battery, put, put it into the 8100 Pro and that's it. Yeah. Mm. That's right. So Apex is asking, what's the best way to nerf flash? Um, and do you think crop sensor is good enough for wedding and newborn photography? Yes. Uh, in the in the first few years in my wedding, I was um, using crop sensor, so I had no problem with that. I was still getting booking. Yeah. No problem. Uh, the best way to learn flash is to use yourself as a model. That that's how I learned flash. And don't. Even though modern technology is amazing, uh, and you know there's TTL and all that kind of automatic stuff, which which is very good, uh, which will get you ninety percent of, of the shot. But if you want to understand flash, you really need to start off with learning flash in manual. So everything in manual first, and then you know the reason why it's a manual is so that you know by increasing the power, you know what will happen to your photo by reducing it. You know exactly. Whereas if everything is TTL automatic, you don't know what the computer is doing, and you'll never learn that way. So that would be my biggest tip. Yeah, I would say don't don't practice. I would agree with Kilo. Don't practice on your on your real couple or the clients who's paying you, mm. uh, especially when they pay you by hour or in, in pay you by minutes, right? Mm. But just practice on the friends around you. I'm sure you 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 have a friend who's getting married or your friend who's willing to to mm. teach for a couple of images and just you just experiment on them and you know they're happy with good images and you can build your own portfolio which is awesome and then use the you know the technique you learned or the formula you learned apply them on your clients mm -hmm. precisely right yeah james jim is asking a question say what is the Godox, the best Godox lighting when you compare with Godox 8200 Pro with V1 with 8100 Pro for wedding photography and reception outdoor? Yeah. 80, my choice is a V1 and um, Godox 8100 Pro. Um, I, at the, since I tried 8100 Pro, I can't do a wedding without using the 100 Pro. Uh, or the V1. To me, V1 and 8100 Pro has this has this spot in the wedding in when you shoot a wedding because um, V1 you need that for your own camera on your camera flash when you quickly need to you know go for the ceremony reception to take those you know candid shot. But 8100 Pro is amazing for location photos, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you already have an 8200 Pro, um, I think it's still it's still a good idea to start thinking about 8100 Pro because 8100 Pro, I'm now using that more for my portrait work um, because um, ever since using 100 Pro, it's so much smaller and easier to use as well. I know. That would be my preferred choice. For wedding, you can't go past a V1 and an 8100 Pro because they both serve yeah. the purpose. So what are your settings on Flash? That you use mostly okay um the reason the reason why i want to say there's no such thing as most new setting because lighting condition is different every single day so there's no such thing as that that's why um, when you learn flash you learn to do manual and then you start to understand you know once you set once once you see the lighting you start to get a rough idea of what power setting you need on your flash so don't get don't get used to um, a certain setting when you go out and shoot. Uh, with that being said though, um, if you want a starting point, I think always the best starting point is um, one over four over power. That's always a good starting point for you to start up with. And then you can adjust from that. But again, that's only a very rough guide because lighting situation always change. The more you practice using flash, the more experience you're gonna get. And then you you start to realize, you know, that the, the the right setting for the situation. 
Um, my, my biggest advice is to practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Yeah. Tamba, I think in case you were asking which mode does Kilo use, he's mostly used the manual mode, right? Mm. Rather than, and you know, from time to time he does use CTL, but mostly manual, mostly manual, as mm. he mentioned. Um, here's a question that says, Can you see the question? Yep, because he's got get get up unusually super colorful and busy. Yeah. Um, so I have I have shot an Indian wedding before, and it is super colorful and and that I agree with that. But this is why having um, and I actually shot that wedding ninety percent of the time using flash, and the reason why I did that rather than using uh, something like natural light is because you know it's because they're they they are super colorful and when you use flash you can actually bring out even more color of the of the and make and make the color richer and more nicer um, and a lot of my that that wedding I remember when I did it a lot of it was using my my V1 because back then the 8100 Pro wasn't out yet um, and a lot of it was bouncing my light off the ceiling um, because bouncing the light off the ceiling will get you the softest light uh, on the couples um, on the couple and also the couples um, um, clothing and um, um, the, her dress and all that kind of stuff. So that would be my advice with that. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kiru. Uh, how about this? Uh, do you want to go back to the bluish, um, bluish, uh, blue gel uh, slide? Yeah. So you can answer mm -hmm. that question. Can you see my slide? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the question? When you put the blue gel in front of the flash, how do you avoid polish on the couple? So the trick with this photo is um, I also I also had I also put the couple next to um, um, a street lamp uh, under a street lamp when I did this, and the street lamp is what gave it that really nice. Um, orange glow on their skin, and then the back lid, the back lid of the couple. The, my my trick to that is not to not to use the power too powerful when you back lid. I think from memory with this one, the power was only one over sixteen, and what I did instead was increase my ISO um, really pretty high. I think it was over a thousand six hundred um, to avoid all that. How to make it look like available sunlight? A flash looks like available sunlight. I think we answered that question, right? Yeah. So your you advice was use a color gel. Yeah, and use a color gel. And when you when you when you use uh, the position of the flash, you can either backlit it, so it's like the sun is setting behind a couple, or you can move it more, move it move it to the side, like to you know forty five degree angle, but the light has to be away from the reach of the camera so it's not in in the scene and just have that little um pick of light coming through that would be how i would normally do it yeah i think Addis, you need to understand um also a bit uh, the light you know when you want to mimic the sunlight you you uh, you need to understand the um the, the direction of the lights as well mm. as um the white balance of the lights which mean uh in a, re in a reference point are you mimic the midday harsh sunlight, then light needs to come from right above. Then mm. the white balance will be somewhere around five, you know, five thousand uh fifty seven hundred K, which you do need you do not even need a color gel because uh, that's what Godox white balance is. And then if you mimic the sunset, the light is almost like um around the horizon line or it's like 30 degree from the horizon line or 20 degree from the horizon line, then you need um a half CTO, even a full CTO, because during the sunset, you know, the sun looks pretty yellowish, right? That's why it's called a golden hour. So you have to, um, when you talk about mimic sunlight, you, you really, are you mimicking, um, you know, midday sun? Are you mimicking a sun, you know, sunset sun? Are you mimic 50% um, of the cloud coverage? They all kind of affect um, the light quality, right? Um, the advice would be, 
uh, try to use color gel and be mindful where the light di uh, position is. Uh, sometimes the grid of the AKR1 kit uh, would be helpful as well. And sometimes just use a bump door like Kilo showed us, right? Mm. Yeah. That's right. How is the better result going off? Um, to me, I, every, um, from my understanding of this question, uh, you're asking- So which one to buy, Kiro is asking which one, which one is bought to buy, is that, or is a better result? <laughs> yeah, like which one? Yeah. Um, if you don't I have a lot it's... yet, if yeah. you don't have a lot yet, the first one you should buy is a V1. Um, mm. Because with a V1, you can put up on top of your camera, and you can also do an off camera uh, with a with a trigger with a X X one Pro trigger. That would be the first one. If you already have a, if you're thinking which one is which one's better, um, there's no such thing as which one's better because that serves two different purposes. Uh, one is one is more powerful and one is less powerful. Um, one I prefer. This one is only off camera flash, and and yeah, so it's, it's different purpose. But if you don't own one yet, then we one would be the first one to get into. It. Yeah. I would agree. You know, if you haven't had any light yet, go get a V1 because it's uh you can use it on camera and you can use it as a trigger to trigger all other flashes. If you have a V1 already, go get an 8100 Pro because it's off camera flash, it's faster recycling time, it's a bit more power. So yeah. Mm. And it's smaller, which is nice. Um and then if you start if you also do portrait work, fashion work, then you start getting you know, ID 300, ID 400, ID 600 lights. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. I think we answered that question somehow, right? Yeah, can you tell us how to create some set look using the flash? Yeah. Um, uh, I, need, I always use a color gel, um, color gel, and then um, and then on top the ID one hundred Pro, and then I normally uh, depend where you want the sunset to be. That's where I'll put the light, but most of the time it's behind a couple to a sunset. But sometimes if the depend on the depth of the light, sometimes the orange gel might be too orange um, for the sunset too. So sometimes I might not use it without the, the gel and just go go just like that. Um, and zoom and zoom 85 to create that kind of thing. Yeah. Can you share a career path? Like the courses you studied or? Uh, of course I can. Yeah, sure. Oh, cool. um, you are so hot, man. Like so, so many questions. So many questions. Is great. <laughs> um, well, my, I, I didn't go to any formal school or anything like that. I, I have joined a few workshop and stuff like that, but that was mainly just online. Um, I actually done a lot of my, a lot of my, um, gang a lot of my knowledge from, you know, watching a lot of YouTube video where, you know, people like what we're doing now, sharing our experiences, sharing our technique. And I've done a lot of that, but in terms of an actual workshop, um, I only been to one workshop and that was Kita's workshop. Uh, that was in Sydney, and that's pretty much the only workshop I've ever been to. Um, but in, uh, in in terms of my career, I you know the first wedding I've done was my was my friend's wedding. I wasn't even a photographer; I was just an assistant that day. But somehow from that, I I've um, you know from doing that first wedding, um, I started uploading some of my photos online, and then um, people liked the photo, and then that's how I started to get my second booking, my third booking, and then yeah, slowly it just kept rolling or rolling in but um but you know but what i what i do though is I, I i love shooting so even if i'm not working or if i'm not working i would i would go out and shoot and um put a put a camera in front of myself and use myself as a model because back then um you know i don't have anybody to shoot so i always would use myself to train my technique and all that kind of stuff and every wedding that i go out back then when i first started out every wedding i would try one new thing um to master one new thing and that's that's my biggest tip you know every time you go out and shoot a wedding or shoot a job try something try one thing that's new and then slowly you know after a number of different years you you start to have a lot of different tricks up, up your sleeve 
and that's how you can you know stand out from the crowd mm. Mm. i hope that helps cool so um johnson uh I guess uh, in addition to Kilo, um, we have AIPB Australian Institute of Professional Photography in Australia, which both me and Kilo is part of and mm. proud of. Um, so if there's any professional institute, try to join them and see if the competition or you know the the courses is there um, are helpful. Mm. In United States, I know there is um, something called what's that? WPPR. APA. APA, oh. no, APA, American Professional Photographers Association, or um, there's a WPPI International for every single one. I think their entry is closed very soon. That's something you can you can try enter and try to be part of. And um, I, I I think both me and Kilo were uh, entering WPPI, which is a great learning experience uh, for mm. both of us. Another way would be um, to assist uh, someone. And thank you. Marcin is a fantastic Sydney-based wedding photographer who's um, who's um, been very um, uh, who's been great to help me out in couple of photo shoots. Like Johnson, if you are based in Sydney, you're more than welcome to get in touch with me and be part of my photo shoots. <laughs> so that's another way of learning, which is um, very intuitive, very intuitive. Yeah. And and especially helping someone like Ari, you get. Amazing experience. I wish. Yeah, I know lots of. I I know I know a lots out lots of by helping out Kilo. Just so you guys know, and um, he, he's amazing. He's all amazing. You always learn something new, uh, every day from another talent. So, um, what do you, if you can't bounce the flash to ceiling, it's not white or gray. Then you put a you put a dome on your flash. Yeah, like this. And that's another yeah. way to soften your light. Or there's also um, one that the Godox kit come with is a is a card, a white card. Mm. Uh, you bounce off the white card, and then the light will bounce off the white card back to the subject. And that's another way of um, making making your light nice and soft. Mm. Using the eighty one hundred on your camera and using a sync cable no i haven't done that you mean to areas your interpretation is to um to sync the idea yeah, with, with the sync cable it's usually works with older camera like you know ah, film okay. camera or you know um some of the medium format which is um i don't know i never used that before so, so i'm no, sorry I, matthew we wouldn't um, be able to answer that question yeah yeah What focus mode do I use on the um, Sony? My best, my favorite focus mode is on um, continuous focus, the AFC mode. And then I always have the auto eye detection and the face detection on. And then my, and then, um, and then on spot, on, on, on the spot, on the spot uh, focus, the one dot focus. Um, you know, the one dot focus, you can have small, large, medium, or large. I would normally start with the medium. That's what I use 90% 90, 90 of the time. Yeah. Pretty much. It's fast, it's small, and it's powerful. Yeah. Mm. I agree. Um, that depends. That depends on whether, you know, whether what power you need. I'm, before the 8100 release, I'm, I'm used to use the 8200 Pro, so that works perfectly fine for wedding. Uh, no problem with that. Um, but if you want to go even lighter, even faster on your wedding shoot, 8100 Pro is the, is the way to go. Um, even though the power on paper is half the power, but I, I find that works for 98% of the time. And if it's not powerful enough, I would just pull the V1 out and combine the two together. Um, that's why I, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Try answer that, mate. <laughs> What's the price difference? <laughs> get get yeah. the cheaper one. <laughs> oh man, you're so Asian. Yeah, I would say I would say the same, man. Uh, I would go with cheaper one. 
<laughs> I would go with Sony because so I think Sony lens is cheaper. Like in, in mirrorless mm -hmm. system, Sony lens is way cheaper than Canon. So uh, not mm -hmm. only look at the camera body, but also look at in long run, you know, which uh, lens performance and the lens pricing point is. If, if the lens performs similarly, uh, just try to look at the pricing point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, overpower the sun, yeah. Um, it can overpower. It can overpower the sun. Obviously, you need to go a lot closer. But if you talk about full afternoon sun, that's why Godox released much powerful flashes, such as you know, um, AD six hundred Pro, AD um, twelve hundred Pro. Um, they twelve hundred Pro is probably your your best one if you want to really overpower the sun. Uh, but for something that for wedding where it's fast, quick, easy solution. You can't go past something like 100 Pro or 200 Pro. Yeah, I think in wedding you are you are rather than focus the power over power the sound. You you want to focus on run and gun kind of style kind of Correct. quick Correct. quickly. Wow, right? Quick photo. Quick. Oh, sorry, wow. I shouldn't wow. use <laughs> Okay, I, I shouldn't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a quick uh, a quick way of doing wow images. I think that's it. What that's what 8100 Pro is designed for. If you want to overpower the sound, you're probably better off something at least from 8300 Pro to balance the sound and 8600 Pro to overpower the sound. That's something you should be looking into. And if that area is, if that area, the lighting is not good and you have to mm -hmm. overpower the sound, just don't shoot there, find a different area. Yeah, because exactly. Lighting, lighting is the most important. You When you go to a, a location, you don't look at the location, you look at the light first yeah. and then you pick your location. Mm -hmm. Location is always second. Yeah. Yes, I would think I would I would believe so. Well, wow, seventy two hundred is 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 a fantastic lens. Um, I miss my seventy two hundred. I uh, my my seventy two hundred broken, and then that's how I got the one thirty five mil. One thirty five mil is is amazing, but um, I still miss my seventy two hundred because of the zoom. I only use seventy two two hundred for studio shots or the church. If it's outdoor weddings, I I just try to stick with my eighty five ready. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You use on camera flash or off the flashlight. I never use on camera flash. It's always um, it's always off a off a off a, a flash. Yeah. But you 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 put uh you put a view one on camera, right? You I put the scene on camera, but not but not the the flash that come with the camera if you know what uh, okay I mean. yeah you know I, I thought he's talking about those one that flips up oh oh the the, the pop-up small pop -up. tiny ones yeah. yeah i don't yeah i don't think he, i don't even think sony uh, has one so yeah. uh okay so it's yeah, yeah I, did, I did i did i did put this on the camera uh yeah. but I, I i i i have this one as a backup oh he's I'm... asking are you using on camera off camera flash for oh. wedding ceremony ah the judge unused on camera flash for wedding ceremony it's faster. Awesome. Ah, oh, thank you, Tanba. I'll definitely visit you. <laughs> I um, I miss all my mates here. Um, that would be amazing. Let's just hope this just hope this uh, chaos ends soon, and we we mm. all get to go to do those wow epic destination wedding <laughs> again. That would be amazing. Wing flash. Harry, this is What's your ring question? flash. Yeah, H200, no, 200 is the round head, not the ring flash head. I think it's referring to the round head. Yes, uh, the 8200 Pro uh, round head, as well as 8100 Pro, as well as V1. They are all round heads, they're all in the same size. So the accessory uh, are AKR1, they are all interchangeable. All interchangeable, yes. And that's why for wedding, you should stick with V1. 8100 Pro, 8200 Pro, because they're all interchangeable. With a round head. With, with a round head. head. So you, yeah. you can have interchangeable. Which makes it easy. My honest opinion would be 100 Pro. Uh, yeah. For for a bit less of the power, but you get the, the size advantage. And I think size matters in wedding. Um, yeah. The easier, the smaller, the faster you can shoot. 
that would be my recommendation. Um, but if you want a bit more power, then 8100, 200 Pro is actually, yeah, it's up. That's what I've been using um, before that 8100 Pro came out. Um, there's lots of uh, free tutorials on Godox YouTube channel, so you can, I, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, that's somewhere to get start with. If you are based in Australia, you can go to coloredsmoke.com.au to um, to get the smoke can uh, key was referring to. Otherwise, just Google smoke can for <laughs> photography. Smoke can photography. Uh, I'm sure you you're gonna find something similar in your country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For outdoor portrait, I would go for. I would say eighty three hundred pro. <laughs> yeah, I would go even more powerful eighty three hundred pro. Yeah, or, or even eighty four hundred pro. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it, my, my if you're looking for um, if you're doing outdoor portrait, you probably want to use um, somewhere down the road. You probably want to use an uh, umbrella or softbox. Um, mm. I think eighty hundred eighty three hundred pro beyond or like which means wow. eighty four. 8600 Pro, 8200 Pro is designed for that purpose. I would See? use this, buddy. Yeah. Use yeah, yeah. Be, that's what I use for outdoor portrait. The exactly. The exactly. So 8100 Pro and 8200 Pro is more designed for run and gun kind of photo shoots, like weddings. You have to be really quick. And if you want to do portrait, you, you have all the luxury, all the luxury to. Uh, to spend time and you want to use large modifiers and then 8300 pro beyond uh you know or 8400 8600 or even 8200 pro is the way to go mm. i use i just buy the ak1 kit and that has all the modifiers i need so you know it has the has the dome has the barn door has color gel. Yeah, I'll just get that kit. It's, it's it's not expensive at all, too, actually. Yeah. So yeah, I bought a. I just recently bought three AKR one because it costs next to nothing, and mm. it's so easy to use. Mm. And sometimes I I use umbrella as well if I want to be soft lights. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's so versatile. You can you can use AKR one as a small modifier for wrong and gun kind of photo shoots. Sometimes if you want to do some portrait shoots. And um, especially, you are not uh, combating with the sun. Uh, you can, you can, you can combine your eighty one hundred pro with umbrella as well, and uh, that would also work. Mm. Wow! Well done. I think we are finished all the questions, which thank is you, uh, which is great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, guys, for watching. I hope you have a enjoyful evening as much as I do. And thank you, Kilu, for being awesome as You're always. Welcome. Thanks for having and, me. Uh, Guys, um, we actually have a 180-100 Pro to give out tonight. If you can answer in the comments in Godox's official YouTube or Facebook channel that, what would you create with 180-100 Pro? Let me repeat the question. What would you create with 8100 Pro? Answer that question in the comments below under Godox official YouTube or Godox official Facebook channel under this video, and uh, you have a you will have a chance to win a free eighty one hundred Pro. For now, sure. stay safe and uh, have a very pleasant evening or have a great day. I will see you guys in the next next week. Bye bye. See you guys. Thank you. Bye.